Hi dear students, we have completed the three units in the electrodynamics one course and the fourth one is uh, magnetostatics. The electrostatics that we, we have already discussed, the source of the electrostatics that was the stationary charges produces constant electric field. We call this as a electrostatics that is the charges at rest produces a constant electric field then we call this as an electrostatics similarly the steady current steady current means constant current the current which does not vary with the time that is called a steady current produces constant magnetic field and uh, the steady of the static magnetic field that is called uh, magnetostatics. Here, first we discuss what is the steady current. That is, if a current I flowing through this conductor, there is a constant value of current. For example, 1 ampere current is flowing through this wire. That 1 ampere is constant, it does not vary with the time. That current is called a steady current. We call it as a steady current. The magnetic field produced by this steady current will be a constant magnetic field. To know the direction of this magnetic field around this current carrying wire, we have the right hand rule. Hold your right hand in this fashion, that is thumb in the direction of the current. This current I is flowing in the upper direction and the fingers curl around the direction of the magnetic field. That is the magnetic field produced around this current carrying conductor is in this direction that is this is the direction of the magnetic field and it effectively is coming out of the page that we usually denote by dot here there will be a large number of lines like this one that is the magnetic field in this side will be coming out of the page and here on this, this side the magnetic field will be going into the page. The arrow indicates that the magnetic field is going into the page that is denoted by cross. Therefore here the magnetic field is will be around this direction you already know all these facts because you have learned this right hand rule in plus two classes that is i simply write here the right hand this is a thumb direction of magnetic field Sorry, direction of the current then your fingers curl around in the direction of magnetic field fine now this is a way to find out the direction of the magnetic field around a current carrying conductor yet the current flowing through the conductor is a steady current now let us discuss what is the magnetic force that is if there is a region where the magnetic field is going into the page and if a charged particle enter to this magnetic field whose charge is q with a velocity v then the magnetic field exert some force on the charge Q that force is given by 
F that is F magnetic and this is equal to Q into V cross B. This is the Lorentz force. The magnitude of the force is given by this expression and the direction of the force is given by the Fleming left hand rule. Okay. That is you are very much familiar with the Fleming's left hand rule. That is stretch your thumb, four fingers and middle finger in the mutually perpendicular direction. The middle finger in the direction of the current or in the direction of the velocity of the particle and the forefinger in the direction of the magnetic field that is we denote it as a B and the thumb gives the direction of the force. But instead of using this Fleming left hand rule, I propose a new rule that is right hand palm rule and using this right hand palm rule you can also find out the direction of the force according to the right hand palm rule keep your palm in the direction of the magnetic field and the four fingers is four of your fingers including four finger middle finger in the direction of the current or the direction of the velocity of the particle then your thumb gives the direction of the force is if there is a magnetic field like this then if a charged particle enter into this magnetic field with a velocity b the strength of the magnetic field is proportional by b here and then we have to keep our palm in the direction of the magnetic field this is your right hand And this is that the four fingers one two three four this four fingers in the direction of the speed and the thumb gives the direction of the force if the charged particle is negative you can apply the same rule but finally reverse the direction of the force this if you follow this right hand palm rule and you could see that the particle coming in this side experience a force in this direction because thumb is oriented on this direction as a result the particle starts to go so in this way here also if we apply again once again the this right hand palm rule the force will be in this direction Finally, the particle you will see that the particle executes a circular motion. In this way, you can find out the direction of the force by using the right hand palm rule. Then, this motion is called cyclotron motion. That is, cyclotron motion is nothing but a circular motion described by a charge moving perpendicular to a magnetic field. I will come to later to this field. If there exists both electric and magnetic field in the same region, then what will be the force experienced by the particle? That is, in the presence of both electric and magnetic field, the net force on the charge that is this F is equal to Q into 
P plus V cross B. That is the charge experienced by both the electric force, that is QE, and the QE to V cross B, that is magnetic force. Next, we discuss cyclotron motion. That is, as I mentioned just now, if this is a electric magnetic field going into the page and a charged particle enter into this magnetic field with the velocity v, then the force on the charged particle will be around this direction. Because of this force, the charged particle, the path of the charged particle changes into this direction. And once the charged particle is started to move in this direction, the force again will be along this one. If you apply the Fleming left hand rule or the right hand palm rule, then the path of the charged particle again changes into round circular shape. Then, because of that force, the charged particle will follow this path. And here again, we experience a force in this direction. These all are the forces. As a result, this charged particle undergoes a motion in the circular path. Cyclotron motion means the circular motion described by a charged particle going perpendicular to a magnetic field is called a cyclotron motion. What is cyclotron? This is a modern particle accelerator. This cyclotron is used to increase the speed of the particle or we can say this is a device used to accelerate the charged particle or we can say this is a device used to find the momentum of the charged particle or to increase the momentum of the charged particle and hence its kinetic energy that is used in the nuclear experiments, nuclear collision experiments where the projectile particle should, should have high energy that energy is given by the cyclotron device by accelerating that projectile particle into high energy. The particle means should be a lighter particle that is elementary particle. Usually the particle used in cyclotron devices is proton, uh, alpha particle etc. Now here in this picture there is a charge Q moves with a velocity in a direction perpendicular to B, the charge that was Q. Then the charged particle experience of course. We have explained the direction and I also given the magnitude of the force. The, the force experienced that is given by F E C is equal to Q into V cross B that is Q V B sin theta. Here theta is equal to 90 degree because theta is the angle between the velocity and magnetic field. Here the velocity is located is along this direction the magnetic field vector is going into the ball perpendicular therefore the angle between them is 90 degree that is q v b if i draw the trajectory of the particle now that trajectory is circle and it, the particle is moving in the anti clockwise direction the radius of that path is known by r the direction of the force that is also to the center. That is the force F, this can be written as Q V B R because the direction of the force is around the radius vector. Fine. 
due to this force the particle moves in the circular path that is circular motion described by a charge moving perpendicular to a magnetic field is called cyclotron motion that is this is the cyclotron motion now what is the centripetal force required for this circular motion so what is the agency that uh, provide this centripetal force for this object for the charged particle to move in the circular path there is a required centripetal force that is provided by magnetic force fb you can write fc is equal to fb fc is the centripetal force mv square by r if the particle is moving in the circular path of radius r then the centripetal force is represented by mv square by r that is equal to u v b or we can write mv is equal to here is clear this p and the cancel that for mv is equal to qb into r here we have to derive the equation for the radius of this path r and the momentum of the particle and the time period of this revolution and the frequency you can expect a lot of numerical questions multiple choice questions from the session that is here the radius r is equal to m v by 2v this is the radius of the path the momentum it is very clear here have mv is nothing but the momentum the momentum p is mv is equal to qpr this momentum of the particle can be written as qpr what about the time period of circular motion that can be written as t is equal to uh, we know that expression velocity v is equal to distance travel divided by time taken if time taken is t and this can be written as time taken t is equal to distance divided by velocity in the case of circular motion the distance traveled by the particle in one revolution is nothing but circumference of the circle that is 2 pi r velocity of the particle is v therefore this t can be written as 2 pi into r by v to find out the substitution for r by v you look at this expression here r by v can be written as m by 2 v therefore the t is equal to 2 pi m by 2 v this is the expression for the time period as the time period depends upon the mass of the particle and the charge of the particle if you are interested to find out the frequency the f is something but 1 by t that is qb divided by 2 pi m this is the expression for the frequency of the revolution or frequency of the circular motion here you can expect a lot of questions for the competitive examination for example if a proton deuteron and an alpha particle are entering in a magnetic field in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field which particle has the largest radius largest frequency largest time period etc fine uh, for this 
you have to remember this equation and if the time period is asked then the time period is purely depends upon the mass and the charge q in this expression uh, for this you just remember this chart that is proton means 1h1 neutron means 1h2 alpha particle is nothing but helium nucleus h e 24 and uh, the next column i am going to write the mass and the next column charge the mass of the alpha particle is represented by mp and its charge is plus e because it contains only one proton and the second neutron whose mass contains uh, two mass number is 2 therefore we can write 2 mp and the charge is plus 1 that is one proton plus another by plus e alpha particle it contains four nucleons therefore this is a 4 mp and whose charge is 2 2 means plus 2 e fine if you remember this chart this type of questions can be answered very quickly because the charge q is given here and the mass m is given here fine now let us move to the next topic that is a helical motion of charge that is here we consider a charge q that enters a magnetic field with a velocity v at a particular angle theta charged particle entered the magnetic field v with a velocity v at angle theta here this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis the particle follow this path and let us examine what is happening here if i resolve this velocity vector into two components this is our x axis this is our y axis and the velocity is this one that makes an angle theta to the x axis that is the magnetic field is along this x axis here if you resolve this v into two components that is i can resolve velocity into x direction that is this is a y component this is i can write v y component and uh, this i can write v x component fine this v x is nothing but v cos theta that is parallel to magnetic field v and the v y component that is this component in the figure v y that is sin theta v sin theta that is perpendicular to the magnetic field the magnetic field is in x direction therefore the vy component is perpendicular to the magnetic field b okay now we calculate what is the force on the charge due to the vy component here in this picture it is very clear that the vy component is perpendicular to the magnetic field that is this angle theta is equal to 90 degree that is here theta is equal to 90 degree therefore this f force can be written as q into v cross b that is v y cross b this is equal to q v y b sin theta Since the angle theta is 90, this is Q 
3yb cos sin 90 is equal to 1. Let's see. What is the meaning of this equation? That is, a uh, y direction of the velocity is affected by the force. Now, force on charge due to the Vs component. Vs component means if you see in the figure, Vx is around this direction, that is, this is Vx, and our magnetic field is also in the same direction. Therefore, theta is equal to 0 degree. If theta is equal to 0 degree, what is the magnetic force? Magnetic force this is the F Q V X V sin theta. Sin theta here is sin zero degree. That is zero. Meaning is the motion alone x direction is not affected by the force. Okay. That is the force does not affect the particle on the x direction. But whereas the force but whereas the force affect on the y direction of for the motion of the particle. Okay. Therefore, because of the Vx and the Vy component, the charge follows a helical path. That is the path followed by the charge in this picture is a helical path because of Vx and Vy components charge follow a helical path then what is the pitch of the helical motion of the charge pitch you know that is the meaning of the pitch in the case of screw gauge the pitch is that distance moved by the pitch scale in the one complete rotation of the head scale that is pitch is nothing but the distance moved when the charge completes one circular motion which means the distance moved when the charge completes one circular motion that is when the particle complete one circular motion that is the uh, meantime the particle is traversing a distance in the x direction also that is uh, in one complete rotation one complete circular motion the distance that it traveled that is called the pitch that is pitch is nothing but a distance therefore distance or pitch can be known as velocity over time we know the expression for the uh, velocity velocity is nothing but distance by time that for distance this pitch is equal to velocity in the time the component of the velocity for the motion around the x direction is vx therefore this is vx into t this vx is nothing but v cos theta time period that is we have already derived 2 pi m divided by qb okay this is the expression for the pitch which is the distance moved in one complete rotation and uh, now what is the radius of this circular motion we can say the radius of this cyclotron motion which component of the velocity is responsible for this cyclotron motion if you go back here you have seen that the force on the charge due to the vy that it gives qv qvyb that is the y component of the velocity is responsible for the 
motion along the this y direction that is the particle experiences significant force along this y direction because of the vy component of the velocity therefore for this particular motion that is around the y direction that is the vy component and for the radius of the cyclotron motion we have to take the velocity perpendicular to the p because the magnetic field is around this direction and this is the y direction the velocity perpendicular to the magnetic field is vy radius of cyclotron motion is for this we have to take velocity perpendicular to magnetic field b we know that expression for the radius that is mv by qb here mv is replaced by the vy mvy by qb this vy means the y component of the velocity v sin theta divided by qb okay. this is the relation for the radius of the cyclotron motion